the ingredients for a great uh, grilled steak. Extra virgin olive oil olea, terre sacre, lemon juice, black pepper, ribeye steak. Black pepper. Touch of extra virgin olive oil. Now we needed to let them rest for 10 minutes. Lemon juice for the lemon dressing with the black pepper, a pinch of salt. Two tablespoons of lemon juice. Mix it up nicely. with uh, four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Mix very nicely. And the dressing is done. Pinch of salt. Remove the steak into a cutting board. Save all the drippings in one corner. Mixing with the dressing. Now you have a good steak dressing, lemon juice, extra virgin olive oil and drippings. Slice the steak. Position in a nice plate and use some of the dressing. The dressing is perfect for like three or four steaks. So one, two tablespoon of lemon juice, four or five spoon of extra virgin olive oil, a pinch of a pepper, and a pinch of. Um, Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT No Gov License allows user modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org. So just can you introduce yourself a little bit? Okay. So Chef Chef Marcello. So chef Marcello, Marcello's of Suffer, New York. And 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 what is what is your um, you know the effect that you see minimum wage on your business and how how it helps how it relates to well, it, how you're able to operate your business? Well, minimum wage. Uh, there is really such a thing as a minimum wage because. Uh, you can have ten dollars, fifteen, twenty dollars an hour. Really doesn't matter, right? Because if a people cannot afford uh, an apartment, doesn't matter if you give them a fifteen or twenty dollars an hour. So I think what they do, the politicians, they need to working on the uh, houses because the house is the most important thing that people should have. Everyone should have a house. So if the house is affordable, okay, then everything else is, can be affordable. Right. If the house is not affordable, then really doesn't matter what minimum wage you give. Right. But if you give a minimum wage to uh, like uh, a student, then nobody will hire them if they cannot afford to have uh, people working. Right. If uh, a business doesn't make enough money to survive, they will not give any minimum wage. They will figure it out how to open a small amount of time right. and shorting in the staff. Right. So really, you got to fire, you fire so, some people. So really, is that, but sorry, really doesn't matter. I think what they needed to do, the politicians, they, they, they needed to have a line veto from town to town, from place to place, a touristic place where there is a tourism. You can say, okay, you know something, let's make the minimum wage a little bit higher because it's a touristic place. A uh, place like Suffern, there is nobody coming in. You can't go in and do the same thing as Nyack or uh, let's say Lake George or uh, let's say 
uh, New York City. You cannot have the same uh, minimum wage in every place where you go. But again, to me, a minimum wage should be as much as the, it could be as long as people would come to the restaurant and pay the prices for supporting the minimum wage. But my politics is the house. You can always take a bus. You can always do a bicycle. You can always eat home. You can always eat in, uh, uh, small things, right? You don't have to eat too much to be alive. But you need to live under a dignity of a house. So the politicians should not raise a minimum wage. should find the places where you have affordable houses. And that is the key of the whole politics. Because if you charge somebody $1,500 for two bedrooms, you do the mathematics. Even at $15 an hour, 40 hours, maybe the spouse has a children, they cannot go to work, but even if they work, you work overtime of another 20 hours at a double, right? Still cannot afford a $1,500 apartment. So, you, you, so until you find an apartment affordable to $600, $700, then the minimum wage will work. But raising the minimum wage, and you still keep the houses of $15, I mean of $1,500, $1,200, were not effective because everything will raise. The, 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 the linen will raise, the eggs will raise, the bread will raise, the salad will raise. Inflation, basically. Everything will raise. Right. Right. And nobody will hire anybody. And so you, you were saying before how, how, in your experience, the minimum wage hurts the poor and the, the, sure, low, the, low, the lowest skilled. Uh, absolutely. Because the corporation are the only one to be able to afford because they micromanaging everything. They microwave everything. They put the people to, to, to a short order cook to cook your meal. You know, they have a ready to go. They pop in the microwave and you go into the restaurants and you just do, 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 do. <laughs> Well, sure. What else do you think they're going to do? Right, look right. at these uh, Applebee's. Look at the uh, Grand Lux. Everything is Porsche control. Everything is made into the cook only has to ta 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 one two three. So the mom and pops or guy like a gourmet restaurant, not me too much because I'm already arrived to the point where I am already above this. But who is going to be the new generation? When I opened the restaurant, right? was 1986. The bathroom they didn't have to be handicapped. You didn't to, needed to have the fire sprinkler. You didn't to have uh, so regu many regulations. Regulation, so today, right? who's going to be able to open up a restaurant? Exactly. You're telling me. And, exactly. with the, and, and, and if you needed to hire your staff, exactly. and, and the minimum wage is so high, right. how the new guy, the poor guy, is able to eventually own a restaurant? Exactly. Only the corporations. Exactly. So, so then, so, right, so, that you, so, so you, who you, you, who you helping? You don't help him uh, to, to, to the American dream. I came from Italy. I got the American dream. But who are I going to pass it through? Yeah, they're, they're crushing the smaller entrepreneurs and business owners. Exactly. They're, they're not allowed to start. So. Exactly. So you take it to the the people want. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm not <laughs> even an independent. I am what they call common sense. <laughs> Okay, common sense is what it is. It has nothing to do with the bit. Because no. I think in any society... It's economics, need, it's business. Listen, any society needs to have a balance. A little bit from the right, a little bit from the left. Okay, you balance it out and you meet them in the center. Okay, because the center is always the one it works. Because too much to the left, you, nothing happened. Too much to the right, nothing happened. Because you have the oppression over here, you have the thing. In the opposite, you have the same thing. Has to be an happy media. Any businessman, any good owners, okay, wants his employee to be good, right? To be working, to right. be productive. But, productive. but you needed to make it available. You needed to have the incentive of the leader to be coming in stronger and create. That's all. So, so how do you feel when the politicians tell you how you should run your business through these laws and regulations? Like, how does that? <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. It's, uh, if a politician didn't, doesn't work the field, if he's not, I think they needed to go to be schooled for, for become a politician. But then, they, before they become a politician, they needed to do uh, one year over here, one year over here, one year over here. They needed to go in into all four departments and uh, understand how a small business working and a big business working. And they needed to have again, and I repeat, uh, like they they supposed to have a line veto on making a law, but they don't do it. Right? They put all the pork right inside the law and then they have to vote in for the whole thing otherwise for nothing no should be a line veto on anything you cannot make new york said new york state uh, all equal because you have area of new york where it's strong area of new york where it's not strong so how can you make it equal 
Is Manhattan the same as upstate New York? It's exactly. <laughs> or even, uh, uh, I would say, um, I mean, even Nyack compared to, let's say, Suffer. Okay, Nyack people go. Piermont, right? People go. There's uh, more community, better, you know, tourists. In Suffer, who else? You have to bring them to people in Suffer. For me to operate something in Suffer cost me much more. Now, some people can say, well, but in Nyack you have so many restaurants. Well, I understand. But at the same time, uh, you, you needed to have that line needed to see, well, how much Marcello grow this year? Mm-hmm. Did he grow 20%? Well, then, if I go 20%, right, and I don't give nothing to my employee, my employee would work for me. Right, exactly. <laughs> so this is the situation that you have to understand. If I have a chef and I give him a $10, and I'm always busy, right, and I keep giving him a $10, he will not work for me. If a waiter will not make the money, he will not work for me. I cook the same thing. So why has to be the politician telling me? Now, if I don't make any money, but everybody around me, they're getting a raise, but the waiter doesn't get a raise, the cook doesn't get a raise. Now you ask me to give them a raise when I don't get a raise. Mm-hmm. How's, how possible is that? No common sense. <laughs> <laughs> so it not, has nothing to do with the uh, politician or this and that. Let me, let me ask you again, um, like when you first started, the, the taxes that you, that you had to deal with at that, time as compared to now uh, what would you say the difference is with your the business taxes oh, I mean look let me ask a question to you let me ask a question Let, let's forget about if you own a property or not okay right, right, let's forget about that let's just do the taxes between New Jersey and New York you know that Rockland County boards with New Jersey right, right. okay do you know by just give the, the, the tip waiters right 750 an hour comparing to one mile away two dollars and 13 an hour how much taxes do I pay Compared to my New Jersey uh, uh, restaurants, uh, uh, you know, neighbor, two thirteen, two seven fifty. Mm-hmm. Same employee. How can I compete with New Jersey? I'm I'm in Suffern. I have Mawa. I have Ramsey. I have uh, Park Ridge. I have all the neighbors around. Mm-hmm. So people should think about that, right? So either you go in and raise in New Jersey as well, either it's a completely federal, mm-hmm. or otherwise don't do it. Don't touch it. But what they want to do? They want to grab in the FICA. They want to grab in the taxes. They don't care about the poor guy. Because they figure that at the end, with the millions of employees, they're still grabbing the money that they needed to put in their pocket. Mm-hmm. You understand? That's basically it. They're stealing the money. They don't care about the poor guy, and they make the mom and pop restaurants go out of business. Or not even not even be able to start their business. I want to start. I want to say, I'll give you an example. Another example, and I leave you alone. If you if you work in a mom and pop restaurant, and you working, um, you come to work at 12 o'clock, and you're leaving an hour away, you know that I should be able to at 2 o'clock when I shut down, you needed to get out of the restaurant. You cannot be in the restaurant if you follow the law. Hmm. So I have to send that guy out into a diner, eating coffee, and wait three hours over there before he can come to work. <laughs> if I, yes, right. they're making everybody illegal. Right. I should go in. So that's why I say to you, a corporation has to be worked different than a restaurant that has up to, let's say, 25 employees hmm. between covering the whole week. So if you have a franchise, like five, six, seven, eight restaurants, you have multi 50 or 60, 100 employees, should be one. You know, the, the mom and pop wrestler should be working a different way. And yeah. that's basically, that way you make, a, you know, a new chef coming in and maybe wanted to open up a restaurant. Today, they have not that chance. There's no, there's no chance. Yeah, they're, no they're, chance. they're killing the small businesses. Yeah, including my restaurant. My restaurant is very hard to be able to sell to, uh, like, a regular chef. Right. Only a corporation can run the restaurant, or you need it to completely knock it down and do something else. So, uh, so, so just before we wrap up, I just want to make sure. So you, from, you started in 1986, and, and how many restaurants do you have now? Well, I have two, one in New Jersey and one here. One in New Jersey and one here. Yeah, I had yeah. many, but, you know, it, it's very hard to, to, to run it, uh, you know, after so many years, you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, you, and you're trying to get out of the, the business now? You're trying to pass oh, no, it down? No, it's not a question of get out. It's a question of that when you're arriving to the point where you're working with a very small uh, percentage of everything. I mean, there is, uh, you're you getting older, 30 years. You need uh, to revamp in. You need to... But how can you revamp in when there is no... For the last eight years, there was no... Um, no profit. No, no, yeah, no profit in the restaurant business. You, so, if you, I didn't, so you're not able to grow? Well, if, well, if I didn't own the, my building, I would be already out a long time ago. Wow. Absolutely. Really?
No, there's, there's no way that you're able to do all that. All the regulations and all the regulation all the increasing uh, food uh, and uh, we OSHA haven't. OSHA and all that. Listen, no, but not much. We haven't really recuperated the economy since 2008. Even if you raised, uh, right? Let's say uh, uh, you went. Oh, but look, uh, we employed another hundred thousand. The economy is much better. Yes, but the same guy that uh, uh, eight years ago, nine years ago, was making, let's say, $70,000. Now he entered into the job with 50. And also he has eight years of credit card fee to maintaining himself. So he's in debt of another 100,000. So now he make 50,000, $20,000 less, in debt of 100. He's not gonna come to my restaurant. So yes, he's employed, but I want, I want money is employed. Mm -hmm. If a kid comes from the college today, right, and you pay the college, right, and he, he will probably get out of the college and make $50,000, right? He spent 180 to go to school, right? <laughs> okay, now he comes at 35. Okay, how is he able to replace my customers that went into uh, Florida at 65? Mm -hmm. The last eight years, there hasn't been no change. Mm -hmm. So a, a, a good restaurants will not be able to survive. Who can be surprised is only the corporations. Mm -hmm. and, the this, and, and the politician makes only them to be available because the mom and pop won't be able to operate. They, they, they basically write the laws and regulations that... <laughs> no, but they, you see, I can, I can tell you that uh, they don't even do it in purpose. They're just stupid. They don't think, <laughs> okay? For them, they think in that they do help. Right, right, because right, right. some people f say, well, we didn't get a raise. But excuse me, if I give you a raise, I needed to put a raise on the menu, right? right exactly. if, I take, exactly. if I take the tip away and I pay salary, what kind of a salary you give to a waiter? If he was making, let's say, uh, $30 an hour, mm -hmm. What, what, what do I pay him now if I take the tip away? Yeah. <laughs> because if he makes $30 an hour, because he makes $30 an hour in the summer, over time, extra work, whatever. But otherwise, if you don't know how much you go day by day, so then you have to put him on a salary. So you put a $15 minimum wage, okay, then I give him $20. But he was making 30 So how we... <laughs> You know, the proverb says, if he's not broken, don't cut. <laughs> and let individual people make their decision. Or the business owners. It's your let business, the, right? Let the people you, make the decision. You know, how, you know how to run your business. Yes, <laughs> leave them alone. Certain business, okay, up to certain employee, right, needs to be left alone. And when somebody wants to spend, has to be chosen a, a business per business, because otherwise nobody will spend. Right. It's like when people say... If you make ten dollars more, you go into a different bracket, right? Yeah, yeah right. Who would make twenty dollars more to go to a different bracket and then you tax him? You get tax more. <laughs> so who would take more responsibility you're, you're, for a small amount? You're of, discouraging. Uh, you're discouraging productivity, basically. Exactly. So it should be what they call them stages, small, small stages. Mm -hmm. I give you one more example. I had a cook, right? I wanted to come to work for me. He says I cannot make no more than four hundred dollars a week. What do you mean? He says, I have an autistic child, mm -hmm. okay? I get $3,000 from the state mm -hmm. to take care. But I, I cannot make no more than $600 a week. <laughs> so if I make $600 or $700 a week, I lose the $3,000. Right. So how much is the $300 more? Three, six, nine, twelve. 12. So I'm losing $3,000 to get $1,200. Who will do that? <laughs> so that's, uh, that explains right. you the situation. Right. You want to know another one, okay? Mm -hmm. They give a child support, right? To, to people, to him, you know, to people, right? Okay. And instead of asking at the end of the year the income tax of the person, mm -hmm. they ask the last uh, three paychecks of when he applied to. So let's say you applied in July or you applied in September. Mm -hmm. What would you do in the last three weeks for you to get the child support or the health insurance for your child? What would you do in the last three weeks to make your payroll low? What would you do? You would take off? Not you work, will ask somebody work, to, right. I'm talking about for the people that they work in the business or right. whatever, uh -huh. you know, they will ask, uh, you know, the, 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 I want to work less hours. Mm -hmm. So they make the paycheck smaller. So they go into the month, they show the last three paychecks and they give them the okay, instead of looking at the whole year. Right, right. Yeah, yeah that's the trap. It keeps them in Okay, the so you're telling me what the politicians do <laughs> if they don't even know that. <laughs> You know, even good intentions have the worst effects. So, <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's, uh, this is Peace Fanaticism. <laughs> Talking with Chef Marcello at uh, Nyack Seaport. So, hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care.
Bye. Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government-controlled 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up in any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so-called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course it's covered by the BitCot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at GetCell411.com. That's GetCell411.com.